Chapter 43. The Psychic Lover Pros and Cons. In your search for a mate you do tend to be somewhat comprehensive with that new mate checklist and make sure the person does have some kind of gainful employment. You have long since learned that new squeeze does not have to have the same meaning as complete liability. After checking it off you move on to other more interesting aspects of the list such as eye color, hairstyle, body shape and a number of other interesting aspects of her. Once the checklist is complete and the two of you have been happily seeing each other for a while you decide it's time to tell your friends about her. Your friends are impressed with the snapshots of her seeing her in person and when being introduced to her. Some of them marvel at what a lucky guy you are and tell you about their envy. As a little more time goes by some of the friends are beginning to get past how hot she looks and bring up the subject of what she does for a living. You have to pause for a moment when it's mentioned. You have to admit to yourself and your friends that you have been so dazzled with how attractive and personable she is that you haven't actually given much thought to her employment situation in working for the Psychic Friends Network. When you tell your friends about the psychic stuff with her there of course is some of the rolling of the eyeballs and raised eyebrows, but for the most part it's just a shrug you get from them, knowing her many other attributes outweigh anything that could be interpreted as ordering, upon really strange. And besides, it's work she can do from home, if she wants. She makes good money and doesn't even have to leave the house. So if there are a few chuckles or strange looks from the friends you could not care less. You love each other and are very happy. What the friends think is not at all near top of the priority list. At the bar after work with the guys you mention to them on occasion that you are fine with it. You tell them how your sweetheart listens to people on the phone for a while, makes up some things about the person, embellishes a little and tells the person how their life is going, just the usual psychic kind of stuff, and she gets a few bucks for it, sometimes quite a few bucks. She could be doing worse. It's not like she's breaking any laws or harming people in any way. Your buddies look at you, smile and nod, while sipping their beer. Some of them chuckle a little and even laugh once in a while, but for the most part they seem okay with it. But all the guys begin to laugh when one of them tells the rest of you how your girl is actually pretty darn good. He mentions with a straight face that he has been calling her a couple times per week and how she somehow seems to know everything about him and his life. You find yourself laughing as well since you know you haven't told her anything about your friend or his life. While looking at your friends you smile and tell yourself that when talking with her he must have mentioned some things that she jotted down then told him about a little later. If he wants to spend five bucks a minute to listen to her tell him things that she dug out of him, well it's his money now isn't it? On your way home you have a good laugh and shake your head when thinking about your friend being one of your sweetheart's customers. She greets you at the house with a warm hug and kiss and asks, how was your day? You smile at her with a chuckle and say, I'm sure you already know. She hugs you more. At dinner you laugh while mentioning to her about your friend who is one of her customers. She smiles while chewing her dinner but doesn't say anything about it. You have a difficult time eating while laughing and telling her about your friend that is such an easy mark and how she is making the nice bucks off him with the lines of nonsense she feeds him. She takes it pretty good when you tease her about how she should not take advantage of him too much. As the two of you go to bed and fall asleep you find yourself still laughing about your gullible buddy who gets the psychic sessions from your girlfriend. The entertainment only gets better the next time you have a beer with the guys. A couple of them help you up off the floor when you laugh so hard you think you are going to die after two more of them tell you they have become devotees to the psychic chick who lives with you. After getting back on your chair you pound the table with both hands while laughing uncontrollably. I can't stand it. This is great. You're such a bunch of chumps. If a few more of you start calling her I'll be able to quit working and she can support me. You manage to compose yourself enough to get a sip of beer without spilling it all over yourself and you shrug when noticing that you were the only one laughing. In the coming weeks you become more comfortable with the idea of your lover helping your friends with their personal lives and getting paid well for it. Maybe it's something that was missing from their lives that they needed, a type of fulfillment they couldn't find elsewhere. Everywhere the two of you go people seem to like her so much and have an interest in her psychic talents. 
For the most part you are comfortable with it and don't say much about it, but sometimes, you find yourself straining when trying not to laugh. When you stop at the bar the guys tell you they have some good news and some bad news. You nearly bust a gut when hearing the good news that now all five of your buddies are calling her at least a couple times per week. You laugh again when hearing the bad news which is that she knows everything about you. Of course she knows everything about me, you idiots. She lives with me for hell's sakes. One of the guys sitting next to you at the table turns to you and points to a hot looking cocktail waitress who is wearing a very skimpy outfit. She didn't know about that and all those lap dances and other stuff, and we certainly didn't tell her. And you can bet we are glad that none of our wives have that psychic hotline number to your girlfriend. You are infuriated and look at the bunch of them. Which one of you ratted me out? Or was it all of you? Hey, I thought we were supposed to have some kind of code amongst us. Who rolled over on me? As you look at them they all slowly shake their heads, with serious looks directly at you. As you stump out of the bar, in a mad frenzy you don't know what to make of it and tell yourself they are all nuts. At least one of them must have squealed, told her things about you and the cocktail waitress. When you get home you notice your sweetheart is pleasant as usual. As the two of you are having dinner you decide to put the whole thing out of your mind. The guys are probably just trying to mess with your head. The next time you see them they will all laugh and tell you how it was just a big joke that they couldn't resist pulling on you. You shake your head and smile while looking at her. No way she could know, you tell yourself. Not possible unless they told her. And you reassure yourself that the guys are just kidding around. Besides, if she knew about the cocktail waitress she would say something about it, wouldn't she? After dinner she puts on some music and snuggles with you for a while. As the music changes to something more upbeat she begins to do a seductive dance and begins stripping. As much as you are enjoying the entertainment you become a little uneasy with her beginning to do the lap dance. You make mad passionate love to her while forgetting about the sully joke the guys played on you. In the morning thoughts of the guys come up and you laugh. Those fools, trying to mess with me like that, you tell yourself and decide you will have to find a way of getting even with them for the joke. At breakfast with your sweetheart you're in good spirits. She smiles lovingly at you while sipping her orange juice. You return the smile, smirk a little and can't resist asking her. Would you like to give me a psychic reading darling? She smiles across at you and shrugs. Why not? What would you like to know? Or should I say, what would you not like to know? Such as basically, that you've been sinning and are going to hell? Is that what you didn't want to know? You laugh. Oh, so I'm going to hell, eh? So what kind of sinning have I been doing and why am I going to hell? But you are not laughing when she tells you about some of the more intimate details of your escapades with a cocktail waitress that even the guys could not have known about. You become outraged and demand repeatedly to know which one of the guys told her. When she doesn't answer you accuse her of having affairs with one or more of your friends. She only shakes her head and smiles. You stump out of the house and go for a drive to cool off. You stop in front of a church and go inches. You pause for a moment when seeing a priest and tell yourself that maybe you shouldn't do this. He has a very serious look on his face and has probably been listening to people's problems all day. But you decide to continue realizing that compared to your problem the other things he's been finding out about are just kid stuff and you have heard that he is quite a nice guy. Yes you should talk to him and he asks you to have a seat. You explain your frustrating situation to the priest and emphasize to him how much the entire mess is creeping you out to no end. And you ask him, I'm not going to hell, am I? He looks at you with a stern face and shakes his head. No, my son, you are not going to hell. You are already in hell and you are really screwed.